Pastor read in your hearing the story of the prodigal son. And out of that, I'm going to, I more or less will refer to the whole thing, but what I want you to concentrate on and think about is verses 17 through 19 of Luke 15. And he said, when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one as the hired servants. That's one of the verses that I'm going to talk about. And I, I want you to, if you can, turn your Bibles to uh, 1 John 4, 7. And that talks about, I'll give you a minute to do that. I have a lot of scripture, and uh, if you want to write, you, you, you went to have a pen and paper, and uh, jot them down so you can check them out for yourself, because... It's not my words, it's the word of God. 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And the third scripture that I want to make reference to today is from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. So remember that. In addressing the important influence fathers have on their sons, Dr. James Dobson remarked, a father holds awesome power in the lives of his children, for good or ill. Amen. Families have understood that fact for centuries. It has been said, no man stands so tall as when he stoops to help a boy. An otherwise observer said, tie a boy to the right man, and he almost never goes wrong. They are both right. When asked who their heroes are, the majority of boys who are fortunate enough to have a father will say, it's my dad. We had a girl say that today, Cindy. On the other hand, when a father is uninvolved, when he doesn't love or care for his kids, it creates an ache, a longing that would linger for decades. Again, without minimizing how much girls need their fathers, which we also acknowledge, boys are constructed emotionally to be dependent on dads in ways that were not understood until recently. Hallelujah. Now as we observe Father's Day today, I can't help but think about the single mothers yeah, right. who are rearing boys on their own as a result of separation, mm -hmm. divorce, Amen. and other societal circumstances, mm -hmm. incarceration, one of them. Right. You need to be commended for being there. That's right. However, the overriding question you have, according to Dr. Dobson, is how can I compensate for the absence of a father who should be there to teach my boys the essence of manhood. Amen, amen. If you raise them boys by yourself and you're a woman, you know what we're talking about. Yes, sir. You need to be encouraged. Yeah. It's a difficult task. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But many mothers have succeeded despite serious limitations amen, and obstacles. Amen, amen. Right. Hallelujah. We have some in our congregation that have done yes, that. Yes, Make no mistake, however, both parents are needed to nurture yes. children. Yes. Each parent has, a, has specific rules. Yes. You know, when you think about it, it takes a male and female to create children. Yes. So why would anyone think that either a male or a female alone is necessary to raise a child? God must you know what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. So these things are not to be taken lightly. Yeah. For those interested, those of you who are raising boys or single, uh, raising boys by themselves, if you're single, 
Dr. Dobson's book entitled Bringing Up Boys should prove to be an outstanding reference if you want to be encouraged and read and get some points. We don't have time to go into all that. Now as we look at the story of the parable of the lost son, known to many as the prodigal son, yes. Amen. Amen. you will find that this is a story of lust, sin, compassion, forgiveness, and restoration, among other things, similarly to what you talked about today. We all have or had, at one time or other, some behaviors in common with the prodigal's character. You see, before coming to Christ, we were conditioned to live a life of separation from God solely because of sin resulting from the devil's deception of Eve. Am I right? Do you agree with that? Subsequently, you and I lived a lifestyle pleasing to who? Satan. Because we were lying, cheating, lusting, we were deceitful. And when we talk about lust, we talk about the heart, the mind, everything. Okay. I know this is a harsh reality, but either we're living for the devil, which are we living in a life of sin, or we're living for Christ, we're living for a life of righteousness. There's no in between. I'm not going to ask you where you stand. You know, at this point, I must say, you know, it's good to be around people of God, because, you know, as you're around people of God, we talk about the things of God. If they like alcohol, I'd be around alcoholics because we talk about where the next drink is coming from. Yeah. If I like drugs, I'll be around the drugs because we talk where the next yes, thing is coming right. from. Mm -hmm. People that are like talks about think that they like yeah. things yeah. in common. That's right. Right. And you know, I'm glad uh, that in this church I have people that we can talk about and at work also. And, and, and bless her heart, anytime my sister-in-law wants, she and I could have long conversations. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> about the word of God. Amen. You know, so that's good. If you live for the devil, whether you realize it or not, you glorify the devil. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And if you're living for the devil, you're living in a life of sin. Yeah. Because that's all the devil is. That's all he is. The truth is not in him. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. That's what John 1 3 tells us. For this purpose, for this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested, that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. Now, if you were living a life of sin, because this is harsh for some people, I'm no sinner, you know. But you see, sin is not just doing. You say we sin in what thought, word, and deed. Yes, that's right. You see, and some people can't can't uh, admit to that or can't understand it. But I want to tell you today: if you're not living for God, you're living for the devil. Amen. If we examine our lifestyle before we came to Christ, you'll agree, like the prodigal, we also wasted our substance on righteous living. Yeah, yeah. As related again in verse 13 of the chapter we read. Because it said, and when he had spent all, there arose a famine in the land, and he began to be mourned. Yeah, yeah. Now before you judge a prodigal son, we, I would say, you and I need to take the beam out of our eye. That's right, that's right. And realize you are no different. 